Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a neurologist who enjoys making videos about brain related topics. Today, I am going to cover a supplement that is purported to help brain health, Bacopa monieri, also known as Brahmi. Now, this is an herb that's been around for centuries and it's rooted in Ayurvedic medicine. It's touted as a calming cognitive enhancer that supports memory, enhances mood, calms anxiety, and improves sleep quality. But what does the research actually say? In this video, I'm going to walk you through the clinical evidence behind Bacopa, whether there's actually enough evidence to support that it works, how it works. We'll also talk Talk about side effects, tips for choosing the right brand, and finally my top brand recommendations. So let's get started. Bacopa contains active compounds known as bacocides, which are thought to contribute to its cognitive enhancing effects. Researchers believe bacocides work by acting as an antioxidant to protect the brain, supporting neurotransmitters like acetylcholine, serotonin, and dopamine, increasing blood flow to the brain, and even reducing harmful proteins like beta amyloid, which are linked to Alzheimer's disease. What do the studies show? In animal models, the effects of Bacopa actually look quite promising. Animal studies suggest that it might help with Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, stroke. Uh, it was also found to reverse memory issues caused by the anti-seizure medication phenytoin without affecting its anti-convulsive effects. But an important note to consider is that humans are not rats or mice. I've talked a lot about this in my previous supplement reviews. Uh, promising animal research doesn't always translate to humans. So let's talk about the human studies. I found two fairly large meta-analyses on Bacopa. Meta-analyses are the strongest type of evidence to determine whether an intervention truly works because they combine data from multiple clinical trials to assess the treatment's effectiveness. So by pooling these trials together, the statistical power increases and it boosts the confidence in the results. The first meta-analysis was performed in 2014. The study combined data from nine different randomized control trials with a total of 437 participants. This meta-analysis found that Bacopa improved speed of attention and reduced choice reaction time. In other words, it made people quicker at responding to tasks but it didn't improve working memory or learning rate. Working memory is like your brain's notepad. It helps you hold on to and manipulate information temporarily, such as remembering a phone number long enough to dial it. Learning rate refers to how quickly you pick up and retain new information. So this meta-analysis showed that Bacopa improved attention and processing speed, but it didn't significantly enhance working memory or learning rate. The conclusion of this study was that it provided modest cognitive benefits in both healthy and memory impaired individuals in a narrow range of cognitive measures. The second meta-analysis that I found was published in 2021. This one analyzed 11 high quality studies with a total of 645 participants. And it found that Bacopa improved something called logical memory. Logical memory refers to your ability to remember and recall meaningful information like stories, events or sequences in a structured way. For example, being able to listen to a story and then later retell its key details accurately. The studies found a small improvement in this area with Bacopa, but no consistent improvements were found across other memory domains. Most of these studies were conducted on healthy adults looking to boost memory who don't have a neurological diagnosis. So for healthy adults, although there are some possible benefits with regard to logical memory, the effectiveness of Bacopa on other memory domains seem limited. There were only two studies in this meta-analysis for people who were specifically diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment. Both studies found significant cognitive improvements in several domains with patients who had MCI or mild cognitive impairment. However, both of these studies used multi-herb formulas that included Bacopa plus additional herbs or supplements. Because of that, we can't infer that it was only Bacopa that contributed to the positive effects. Moreover, these two studies, despite demonstrating positive results, did not find significant differences in the same group of cognitive tests, and this significantly limits the conclusions that we can make from that. Another randomized clinical trial studied older people with age-associated memory impairment, but no official diagnosis of dementia 
or MCI or psychiatric disorder, and they found that Bacopa produced significant improvement on mental control, logical memory, and paired associated learning during a 12-week intervention. When it comes to Bacopa's cognitive effects on Alzheimer's disease, I only found one double-blind placebo-controlled trial, and it tested the effects of Bacopa in patients with Alzheimer's, but this study also used a polyherb formulation, so again, any effects observed uh, could not solely be attributed to Bacopa. Now, this polyherb formulation did demonstrate some positive effects against placebo in healthy patients, and it appeared to be equal to the standard acetylcholinesterase inhibitor donepezil, which is commonly used in Alzheimer's patients. I found it interesting that the depression scores of the patients taking the Bacopa polyherb pharmacy had a substantial improvement compared to the Alzheimer's patients that were just treated with donepezil. Their depression score actually returned close to that of a healthy aged individual. Another study also investigated the effect of Bacopa in 39 patients that were formally diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. The study found mild statistically significant increases in performance on various aspects of the mini mental status exam test. Now this is a screening test that we use for dementia or if we have any concerns that a patient has cognitive deficits, we do this mini mental status screening exam. It's not a formal neuropsychological evaluation evaluation. Uh, it's, it's a pretty simple one-page test. The study concluded that Bacopa is beneficial in Alzheimer's disease patients, but again, they used a very simple screening tool rather than thorough neuropsychological assessment. Uh, the study was really small. It only tested 39 patients. The, pa the study was not placebo controlled and it wasn't randomized. So this was not a high quality study. And so we can't really uh, take a lot from this. What about Bacopa's effects on depression and anxiety? Multiple studies in animal models have identified Bacopa as a potential antidepressant, having similar effects to the antidepressant fluoxetine in stress models of depression. When it comes to human clinical data, I found four randomized placebo-controlled double-blind studies using Bacopa as a single herb intervention, and two studies using a multi-herb intervention that included Bacopa that measured depression and or anxiety. Of the studies that tested Bacopa as a single herb, only one study found statistically significant effects on depression and anxiety compared to placebo. The remaining three studies found no significant effects. Of the two multi-herb studies, one found a statistically significant effect on stress symptoms, and the other found a statistically significant effect on depression. However, because these studies used multi-herb formulations, these significant effects cannot solely be attributed to Bacopa. I did find one additional study that looked at patients with clinical anhedonia, which is the inability to feel pleasure from activities usually found enjoyable, and it's often a component of depression. Now, the study compared Bacopa to a common antidepressant called citalopram, but it didn't include a placebo group. The results show that Bacopa enhanced the effects of citalopram. In other words, it made it work better. What about Bacopa's effects on sleep? I only found one randomized placebo-controlled double-blind trial that measured Bacopa's effects on sleep. Now, this followed 100 people with self-reported poor sleep. The study found that Bacopa did not improve sleep patterns more than placebo. However, it was a associated with greater improvements in emotional well-being, general health, and pain-related symptoms. Also, Bacopa was found to decrease two key biomarkers associated with stress and immune activity. So this suggests that Bacopa may help modulate the body's stress response and immune regulation. What about the effects of Bacopa in ADHD patients? I found a couple of studies that were found to help improve ADHD symptoms in children and adolescents. The first study was a randomized control trial on 300 children who consumed a beverage fortified with Bacopa and a variety of different vitamins and nutrients versus a placebo beverage. The study found that the fortified beverage did not significantly improve short-term memory, sustained attention, episodic memory, or executive function, but it did improve spatial working memory. Another small study on 31 children found that six months of supplementation with Bacopa substantially improved ADHD symptoms, including hyperactivity, 
consciousness, learning problems, impulsivity, and mental problems. Keep in mind though that these improvements were reported by the parents in a survey, so there's definitely a high possibility of reporting bias because surveys can be highly subjective. Now let's talk about the potential side effects of Bacopa. It's generally safe. Some people experience mild side effects like nausea, stomach cramps, headaches, drowsiness. It also might interact with certain medications that affect the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. It can also interact with thyroid hormones or thyroid medications. So if you're on thyroid medications or medications that affect acetylcholine, definitely be sure to talk to your doctor before starting the supplement. If you're thinking about trying Bacopa, look for supplements that give you a dosage of 300 to 600 milligrams per day that are standardized to 20 to 55% bacocytes, which is what most studies use when testing Bacopa. Here's a list of my top picks for Bacopa supplement brands. Please note, that this list reflects my opinions only based on my review of third-party certification and quality sites, as well as brands that have a reputation for producing high-quality supplements. This also is not an exhaustive list, and it only represents the products that I found based on my own research. Also, this list reflects my opinions only, and I encourage you to do your own research when trying to decide what supplement to take. So what are my final conclusions? Is Bacopa worth trying? Well, compared to most other nootropic supplements that I've seen out there, Bacopa has been studied more extensively, which is definitely a bonus. When it comes to memory in healthy adults, the majority of studies do show positive effects. However, these effects are scattered across different aspects of memory, with no consistent improvements found across all studies. But when the studies were pulled together in meta-analyses, Bacopa did show significant effects in a narrow range of specific memory types. Now this is promising, but still somewhat limited. For people with memory impairment, Alzheimer's disease, depression, or ADHD, the research shows some promise but the number of studies in these categories is small and the quality of the studies isn't as strong as I'd like for them to be. Many of these studies tested Bacopa in multi-herb formulations, which makes it difficult to attribute any positive effects solely to Bacopa. When it comes to sleep, the only study I found showed no benefits for Bacopa for insomnia or improving sleep. If you're curious about Bacopa, want to give it a try, it could be worth experimenting with. It has a low side effect profile. And among all of the supplements that I've reviewed, Bacopa stands out for having more data supporting at least some cognitive benefits. Just keep in mind that the effects of supplements in general are modest at best. And for optimal health, they should be combined with healthy lifestyle practices like a balanced diet, exercise, and good sleep habits. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more evidence-based reviews on health and wellness and supplements. Uh, let me know in the comments, have you tried Bacopa? What was your experience? And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.